What's up guys, my name is Max and today we are embarking on a new adventure. So for my longtime viewers, you'll remember about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I had a green Supra ski boat. It was about a 21 footer open bow, uh, fuel injected 5.7. I bought that boat out of Houston for $4,000. I had a bunch of adventures. It broke literally everything. I ended up putting another six grand and countless hours of my time into it. I made a bunch of videos with it. And then I managed to sell it for about what I had in it. Um, which makes me somewhat of a unicorn in the boat world. I actually managed to get my money back out of that piece of junk. And I told myself, no more boats. Cars, great. Bikes are great. Boats are a nightmare. And then the Texas summer hit. And then I went on a party boat, and then I went on another party boat, and then I was like, man, I love spending time on the lake, and I love spending time on the water, and I don't have enough broken shit in my life. Um, so I started hitting Craigslist, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put it off till winter. This winter, I'm going to buy a boat. It's going to be a winter project. It'll be great. I'll have all the time in the world to make it work, and yada, yada, yada. And so then I came across a good deal. So I thought, well, I'll go look at this, um, you know, this boat, it'll be fine. I'll just go take a look, see if it's worth it. You know, this deal seems way too good to be true. Um, and I bought it. But it's better. It's not a ski boat. I didn't buy another ski boat. Instead, I bought basically a yacht. Um... It's got a cabin, it's got a toilet, conceptually, which sort of makes it a yacht. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to call it a yacht. It's going to make me feel better about myself. Um, but what we have here is a 23-foot Crown Line 225 CCR or something like that. And it's got a 454 uh, Merc engine, a Bravo 1 outdrive. Um, and it comes on this trailer and it's cool because the guy I bought it from uh, loved it and used it. He's actually the second owner. He'd had this thing for over a decade um, and it's a 93 so it's, it's pretty old. Um, but he sold it to me for a whopping $1,700 with a trailer. Which is going to make you wonder. Why would somebody sell you that much boat? A boat that if you look it up is worth somewhere between five and Five and ten thousand dollars, depending on condition and year and whatever, but something in that range. So, like, realistically, if this boat was in perfect running order. I would probably ask seventy five hundred bucks for it, and I'd probably take six or something like that. Um, so, why did I get it with a trailer and a title for seventeen hundred bucks? Well, the guy had it appraised, uh, and when the appraisal came, the guy pointed, the appraiser pointed out that the engine had a weird noise. Weird noise from the engine. And so the guy turned it on for me and I listened to it and he thought the engine was toast and was basically selling it to me with a blown engine. The truth is, I listened to it. It's got some upper valve train noise. Could be a stuck lifter, could be a bent push rod, could be that it's just out of fucking, like the valves need to be adjusted. Uh, valve lash needs to be adjusted. I really don't know. It fires right up. It's got a miserable uh, quadrajet carb on it. Um, and it's definitely going to take some work, even if the engine was uh, in really good shape. There's still some maintenance that needs to be done, some things that need to be done to get it back on the water. But I'm excited, because now I have a boat taking up half of my fucking driveway. And uh, it's the middle of summer. It is currently July something or another. But the nice thing about Texas is boating is really kind of a year-round thing. Um, here on Lake Travis, you can go swimming as late as early October, maybe even towards November on, on nice days. Uh, and, you know, it depends on, you know, what your tolerance level is. But you can hit the lake and, and drink and uh, have cookouts and stuff uh, all year round, pretty much, if the weather's nice. So, we're going to pull the cover off and we're going to figure out what the hell's going on with this engine. Because I don't want to screw with anything else on the boat until I'm 100% convinced that this engine is good. Because that's where the money is. That's where, if we have to pull this engine out for any reason, it is a major undertaking and I'll probably put it off for the winter because it's going to be a huge, huge project just getting the motor in and out. But that being said, it's a 454. I can rebuild it for about a thousand bucks. So even if I'm in this boat, $2,500 or so, 
that's still a third of what it's worth. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if I'm an idiot. Um, I kind of took a gamble on this one based on a little bit of listening on the, uh, you know, just listening to the motor idling in this guy's driveway. So we're going to get in there. I'm going to show you guys the boat a little bit. I haven't even cleaned it. I haven't looked at it. I just brought it home the other day. Um, and we're going to see what's going on with this motor. Well, after spending probably about five hours total trying my best to figure out what the hell is going on with this motor, I ended up getting a delivery of a boroscope. And so I'm going to put some pictures up on the screen right now. And this is what the inside of the motor looks like. I changed out all the spark plugs for OEM plugs. I uh, gapped them to what it said on the, the manual. Um, and as you can see, these cylinders, probably five out of eight cylinders, uh, maybe six out of eight, got pinged really, really hard. Either that or somebody shoved a bunch of metal shavings down the intake um, or into the piston somehow. As you can see, there's a bunch of little tiny, like, um, not cracks, but like chips. This is pretty common when an engine's been pinged to death, which usually means uh, the wrong timing or running way too lean. Um, so I conferred with a buddy of mine who is an expert in all things junkyard uh, and said, you know, what is the life expectancy of a motor like this? You know, am I... Is this thing just about dead or reality is it makes a kind of uncomfortable noise but other than a very specific rpm but other than that it's fine he said it's fine what we did was we took a few degrees of timing out of this is back down to the factory timing we're running eight degrees at idle and 28 all in which is extremely mild for a chevy big block um, boats are different but normally on the street you'd see something like 10 degrees at idle and and as much as 36 degrees all in combining you know mechanical advance and uh, vacuum advance this engine only has mechanical advance so it's just a 20 degree straight mechanical advance input um, so we go from 8 to 28 at 3100 something like that uh, and this engine uh, in neutral will rev According to the dial to like six grand but uh it's peak operating power in the water is i think 42 or 4400 rpm something like that um so here's the deal uh i don't know to me this engine needs a full rebuild uh that means pistons and everything cleaned out it's obvious it's had a lot of bad gas through it the inside of the intake manifold looks disgusting i'll put a picture of that right now um, the spark plugs look like that had a, a pretty, pretty hard life. So I locked in the timing. I did the best carb adjustment that I could. This carb is a quadrajet boat variant and it doesn't run on, or it runs on vacuum, but all the vacuum is internal. There's no external vacuum hookups. So I don't really know how to tune it. I basically got it to the point where it revs nice, uh, but we might tune it some more on the water um, and, and just kind of, blindly looking at it. I'm gonna look at some more videos before we go out tomorrow so tomorrow we're gonna go out on the water um, and see how this thing does because that's that's really the key if the if the boat runs great all day on the water I'm not worried about it I don't give a shit what noise it makes it makes no difference to me at all um, uh, if we can get a summer out of this thing for 1700 bucks even if this winter I gotta pull the motor and do a full rebuild that's a hundred percent worthwhile um, I'm sorry I didn't really film a lot of this. Uh, the other big thing we had was we had a vacuum leak, so I put a new carb gasket on it. All the vacuum leak went away. She runs super good now. Uh, sorry I didn't film a lot of this. It's just getting into the boat, and it's 150 million degrees out here, uh, and I've just been bad. So catch me tomorrow. We're going to be out on the water, and we're going to see how this thing does. Well, boys and girls, here we are out on the water. Engine's running way better than it ever ran on land. The idle mixture still needs some adjustment, but this is beautiful Lake Travis, and people are boating, having a good time. This is one of my favorite places to uh, to come out and do some like tubing and stuff like that. This little Paradise Cove or whatever it's called. We're gonna head out to open water here in a minute uh, and just see what's up. We got the radio working, got everything working. Might take a little swim real quick because it's hot as bowl. 